Hi, in this video we're going to look at checking all of the conditions for a vector space to determine which are met and which are not met for this example that we're given here. So for this example our set V, so our set of vectors, is really not a true vector at all in the sense that you might think of it from physics or from calculus. Uh, our set of vectors is a set of polynomials uh, ax squared plus bx plus c, so quadratic polynomials, where a, b, and c are integers. So actually a, b, and c being integers means that they could be positive or negative whole numbers or zero. So we've got quadratic polynomials, but also degree one polynomials, constants would also be included in that, but the important thing there would be that all of the coefficients are positive or negative whole numbers or zero. All right, and then our scalars are the set of real numbers. And so one of the things that we want to think about is what would be the addition and scalar multiplication that are defined for this set of vectors and set of scalars. So if you think about adding polynomials, the addition would be basically the same kind of addition that you would do for any kind of polynomial. So if I have one uh, of the vectors in this vector space, so a polynomial, I use subscripts here because I'm going to have a second one and then I'm going to add that to a second one. Just think about how you usually add two polynomials. You combine like terms and so you end up adding the coefficients and that becomes your new coefficient for the simplified version of the polynomial. So your new coefficients just come from adding the coefficients on the like terms from the two polynomials that you're adding. And then thinking about scalar multiplication, I'm going to use k for my scalar here. But if I have some scalar times a polynomial, um, the multiplication here is just ordinary basic distributive properties. So you end up multiplying all of the coefficients in the polynomial by k. So I'm going to use some parentheses here just to emphasize that, that our new coefficient on the first one would be a times k. Don't really need parentheses there. And then bk on the second one, and ck would be our constant term. So that's how we would think about the addition and scalar multiplication operations on uh, this set of vectors and scalars. All right, so we want to think through all of the conditions in the uh, definition of vector space. So we have a bunch of conditions that need to hold on the set of scalars. Since our set of scalars is the set of all real numbers, all of those conditions actually will hold and you don't necessarily need to check that. For our purposes, if you have the set of complex numbers or the set of all real numbers for your scalars, you don't need to check those conditions. They will hold. But what I need to check is that all the conditions on the vector space, the set V, hold. So I've got those here on the screen if I just scroll over here. All right, so these are all of the conditions on the set of vectors in whatever order they are. This is the way I had them in our class notes. Uh, so we just want to check to see which of these hold and which of these do not hold when we think about adding polynomials of degree two or less where all the coefficients of integers and the scalar multiplication would be that the scalars are can be any real number and can distribute through there. All right, so we want to think about whether each of these hold or not and justify that. I'm not really going to go through a formal proof of this, but just write down some brief justification about that. So for additive closure, I want to think about if I add those two polynomials, if I add them together and I combine like terms and I add those coefficients, basically am I still going to get integer coefficients when I add those? And yes, we will, because when you add two integers, you get another integer. So this one does check because when I add the integer coefficients, I get another integer. All right, additive commutativity. So thinking about adding two polynomials like that, can I switch the order of them? And so yes, that's true. That really goes back to the fact that the coefficients are integers and when you add integers that is commutative also. So yes, this works. If I start with, I'm just going to write here a polynomial that is in that set plus another polynomial p of x plus q of x, that's going to be equal to q of x plus p of x. So I do have commutativity on the addition there. 
associativity. So that's thinking about if I have three polynomials that are in that set and I group them so that I add them in one order, is that going to be equal to what happens when I add them in another order? And yes, that will work. That really goes back to the fact that adding integers. When we add these polynomials, remember we're really just combining like terms, we're adding up the coefficients and so that's the actual change that we make to the polynomial and because adding integers is associative, we can rearrange them and regroup them so that we add two of them uh, first and then the third one and then the other way around, that, that we have that property as well. All right, additive identity. So I want to think about is there an element of this set V, the set of vectors that is the additive identity. And so we use the zero uh, written kind of as a vector there to designate that, but often the additive identity is zero. It kind of depends how the addition is defined, if it's ordinary addition or not. But yeah, the polynomial that is zero, uh, I could think of that as zero x squared plus zero x plus zero, that is in the set V. So that is our additive identity. So yes, that does satisfy the definition of what the set V is because those coefficients are all integers. Um, additive inverses. Each element of V has an additive inverse. And yeah, so if I start with a polynomial AX squared plus BX plus C, where all those coefficients are integers, that is in V then that also means that the opposite, negative ax squared minus bx minus c will also be in v, right? So the opposites of the integers are just the opposite sign integers, so they are still integers, and so we have that property as well. Scalar multiplication closure, multiplying any scalar in s times any vector in v gives a vector in v. And so the key thing here is remembering that our scalars can be all real numbers, not just positive and negative whole numbers, but all real numbers. So this one actually is one that does not hold. This one does not hold if you think about the scalar being say one half and our polynomial uh, being say just one x squared. So x squared is my polynomial and that is in V because the coefficients are 1, 0, and 0, which are all integers. But if I take 1 half times x squared, I get 1 half x squared, and that is not in V, because that coefficient is not an integer. So scalar multiplication closure fails. So at this point, I can say that that set that we were looking at is not a vector space. I don't really need to check any of the other conditions in order to determine whether or not my set V is a vector space. If we're just interested in thinking through whether these conditions are met or not, which is actually what our question asked, then we might continue to think through those. But this definition, if these conditions fail in any condition, then you don't have an actual vector space. So this tells us V, that V that we have here is not a vector space. So these other conditions are actually all met. The only one that fails for this definition is the scalar multiplication closure. For these others, it's important to remember that your vectors are really polynomials and your scalar here can be any real number. But if I have some real number and I'm going to distribute that through the sum of two polynomials, that I can do that by multiplying times the first polynomial first and then times the second polynomial and then combining like terms or I can do it the other way around. So yes, that is met. Um, vector distributivity, this is when I have more than one scalar. So uh, let's do k plus m times p of x. Yes, that works. I can take the k times p of x plus the m times p of x and then combine like terms. So yes, that does work and associativity of scalar multiplication. So multiplication between scalars and also the scalar multiplication between a scalar and a vector. So again, if I have two scalars times a polynomial, I can multiply the scalars together first and then distribute through, or that will be the same as multiplying one of the scalars through and then multiplying the other scalar through. So that will be the same. And scalar multiplication identity, 
Yes, one is in that set of real numbers, and one times any polynomial is just going to be that polynomial. All right, so the only one that failed in this case was this scalar multiplication closure. We're going to look at some more examples where we just identify what is or is not satisfied for a definition of vector space, so be sure to watch some more videos.